welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We're here with another edition of Chesapeake Chats. I'm your host, Lisa, and I'm joined by the amazing Jess, aka Chessie Jess on Twitter. Welcome back, Jess. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. I mean, you're like super, you know, Chesapeake Shores fan. Like you've even got um, a sea home and heart or whatever the Canadian version, like chatting with you regularly like trying to get your opinions and i mean good for you thank you that's awesome <laughs> um i mean at this point though we're already halfway through the season which i think is bonkers sad right like three episodes and halfway i cry about it every night it's ridiculous um so at this midpoint how are you feeling about this season like are you liking it so far or are you like eh, or do you have questions like what it's been a really solid season, I think. Yeah. I I have no complaints. Do I have complaints? <laughs> I don't think I have any complaints yet. I have a few complaints. <laughs> I have a few complaints, but then I always have a few complaints, so nobody's surprised, really. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> um, as far as this episode, which is episode three, titled A Sonnet for Caroline... Which threw me off because I really thought that meant that Kimberly Susted was coming back to the episode and she didn't. So thanks, Hallmark, for the tease. Yes. Um, like overall on this this episode alone, what did you think? Did you like it? Were you in? Were you out? Were you like, what is happening? I no, I love this episode. Like it might be my favorite episode. <gasps> really? Of the season or like all time? It might be all time, <gasps> honestly. That's some serious high praise. Y'all hear it, heard it here first. I've watched this episode four times. No. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to feel bad because I really didn't like some of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I won't hold it against you. But I'm glad because now we get some, we'll get some good juicy opinions. That's awesome. Okay, so I did watch it twice. Once to just watch it and then the second time to make notes and again like last week on the second on the rewatch I got mad <laughs> but when do I not get mad let's be honest so okay so the episode cracks off with well I'm going to start with Jess and David their storyline was the most bizarre to me this episode <laughs> it was the weirdest it was funny but I just bizarre so i'm gonna start with them um they pretty much spend the whole episode trying to convince their rivals in the bnb that they want to buy their rivals the medinas to let them actually buy the bnb instead of them which i have questions i don't understand real estate but i mean it was funny <laughs> it was funny i do no. work in commercial real estate now i don't i'm not a broker but I work on the marketing side of things. The way I, it works in my company is there are bids. So everybody puts in a bid. So maybe that's the type of situation. It's not like a house where once somebody puts in an offer, nobody else can really make an offer. So I can see that. But this just seems so really, like I said, bizarre. Jess ends up tricking the Medinas by telling them she works for the PEX, the Boston PEX, and that they wouldn't want to get into a bidding war with the Boston pecs and the Medinas are apparently like super bad at due diligence or even researching or Googling. Cause they're like, eh, okay, you're right. We don't want a bidding war and they're just done. <laughs> the Boston pecs, they, they have a lot of, they have a big name. That's it's going to scare everybody off, I guess. I guess, but <laughs> I would think that if you have that much money and you are really interested in a piece of property that you might just do a quick Google search or have one of your administrative assistants call one of their administrative assistants and just, hey, are the Pecks really in on this deal? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess David showing up and being like, oh, I'm David Peck. I guess that lends a lot of yeah weight to their argument. But the whole thing was just. Odd, it was the funniest. But hilarious. I mean, really, it was, yeah, it really was kind of slapsticky, which 
it was good comic relief. So it was fine. I just thought, really? I don't think this would ever really happen in real life. I think that's why I like it, <laughs> because I know that I don't think that would ever happen. And if it did, my job would be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> I should just enjoy it for what it is. Just goofy. So in the course of this, you know, Jess is running around and she's trying to comfort Bree. Um, and at the same time, kind of comfort herself because between <laughs> Jess, Bree, and Connor, they've kind of had a little powwow because they're all like upset about something. Jess, it was the B and B, almost losing it. Um, Connor, which we'll get to, was his relationship with Danielle, bleh. and then Bree is still super confused over Simon. And at this episode, she realizes that Simon is not the one. But she really, really wishes he was. And eventually at the end of the episode, Simon comes in with this fake letter thing and breaks up with her through like fan fiction. I don't know. (laughs) That whole thing was odd, too. What did you think about this? Were you sad that they ended? Are you happy? Like, what is... (laughs) What is your thoughts? I didn't think that I cared about Brie and Simon. Like, I don't think that they were good together. But that letter made me cry so hard like I cried for days after but I'm also super emotional and I cry about everything so I don't really know if that means anything (laughs) that that means that you're really upset about them or if you were just like oh (laughs) okay in all fairness I shouldn't knock it because that scene was painful to watch like in a good like dramatic way it hurt my heart oh my gosh i mean they just both played it so well and i was just i was just sitting there with my jaw on the floor just like what i was sobbing (sighs) yeah it was terrible like Uh but in a good dramatic way but just like oh god do you think this is it though like the that he won't be back this is for good i think so i think so too but I mean that I hope so. Not that I don't dislike Simon, but I'm over it. Yeah, I have thoughts about that actually. About what's going to be next for Brie and her whole life. Oh, please share. Do anything that you want to tell now, or do you want to wait? I'll wait. Okay. No, I'll wait. Okay. Well, it's a little teaser. Now I'm excited. <laughs> um, for me, honestly, it was heartbreaking. But I was like, you know what? Honestly, as I was watching it, I was like. Good for them, because at least someone on this show made a decision one way or another. We are done. We are broken up. Goodbye. And as painful as it was, I really liked that they recognized it wasn't working, talked about it, and was like, and it's over. We both had a lovely time, but it's over. And I really thought that was kind of courageous of the writers to let it actually happen. So it'll be interesting to see if they let him stay away or if they bring him back at the end as like a, <gasps> I'm like, please don't trace an abbeyus. Oh gosh, please. They're no. broken up. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> but I'll miss Simon. I will too. I liked him. I did too. Just not with Bree. They were really good friends and writing partners. Yeah. I don't think ever should have been. Well, I feel like that whole thing should have, that whole entire conversation, not the fan fiction part, like that fake letter that he was reading off of, whatever. But that whole breakup scene, I feel like that should have been Connor and Danielle. But <laughs> I can't have everything. <laughs> Speaking of Connor and Danielle, I'm going to jump and grab them first because there's other bigger fish to fry in this episode um but connor and danielle apparently are i guess closer than i realized i mean i know they're dating but connor at some point asked danielle about her family and it comes out that danielle is not super close with her family but it doesn't bother her she's like whatever it doesn't matter and connor's like weirded out by her lack of closeness with her family really upset by it which i thought was odd because not everybody's super close with their family but he don't even know her whole story maybe she has a really good reason not to be close to her family yeah (laughs) 
I don't understand. <laughs> Didn't you? Did you think that was odd? I thought it was really odd that he was that upset about it. Yeah, like he's very obsessed with her not being close to her family. Yeah, and he was like, "Well, eventually, you you have to forgive." And she's like, "Not necessarily." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, really? Like, how can you even think that? And it's like, he wasn't close with his family one year ago, right? He was how in long? New York. Two years ago? I don't know how much time has passed. <laughs> yeah, that bothered me. And another thing that bothered me, to be honest with you, is when Connor, Bree, and Jess are in uh, Word Up Wordplay. What is? It? I said Word Up <laughs> Wordplay, the bookstore talking about their you know relationships and whatnot and connor says well i mean we've been through so much already and i'm thinking they've been through what they haven't been through anything they went through law school together right like he made it it's like well i have to stick it out because we've already been through a lot what have you been through she went out to dinner with some other dude a couple times that's nothing like Kevin and Sarah, Kevin who was majorly injured in war and Sarah who lost her husband, they've been through a lot <laughs> as a couple, like coming together and getting over all these obstacles to be together. Connor and Danielle just couldn't decide whether they really wanted to be together. Like they haven't been through a lot. No. I, I know that sounds terrible, but Connor, no, you haven't been through a lot. Not with Danielle, but so she they're walking on the shoreline or the beach part whatever and connor brings it up again hey it really concerns me about your family that you're not close with them and danielle says well you know what that's you and your family and it's part of why i like you oh by the way i love you and he doesn't say it back but they super hardcore kiss on that ridge or bluff or whatever like that's the most intense kiss he's had on this show I, I think so I don't think they've ever really shown him like like that no I don't either I was kind of like whoa and then I kind of felt weird like oh no that stop that's enough <laughs> <laughs> like watching my brother kiss or something that's enough of that thanks guys <laughs> like, that's enough okay that's enough but he didn't but he didn't say it back. He just looked at her. Or did he say it? I don't think he said it. At least he didn't say thank you. Oh, that's true. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's her name on Goodwitch? <laughs> when Donovan says, I love you. And she's like, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I wonder if that'll pop up in a future episode that he didn't actually say it back. He just stared at her and then they kissed. And I'm like, eh. I kind of feel like she needed a return. She has to say it back. Yeah. But apparently she didn't care because she went in for that kiss. So <laughs> good for Danielle. Also in this episode, people kissing that I was not prepared for emotionally was Mick and Megan. How did you feel about that? <sighs> I don't know why they... They make me so happy. Are you? Oh, yeah, that's right. You are into it. Oh. I wasn't at first. And then I was. And now I'm like super emotionally invested in this relationship. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, now I feel super bad. <laughs> and if Mick does anything to hurt her, like I'm going to go through the TV oh, yeah. and throw hands. <laughs> I feel like that would be inevitable. If we had 10 episodes, that it would be a, a no brainer that he would do something ridiculous to Megan. I don't trust him. No. Make you're a great guy, but no. Probably a horrible boyfriend. Yeah. I I I was not prepared for that moment at all. I was watching as I was getting ready for work and I had it on my phone propped up <laughs> in my bathroom as I was like doing my hair and like getting ready <laughs> and I'm like standing there with the flat iron and I'm like what and I'm like no don't burn your hair <laughs> what is happening it was just so like oh my gosh is this really happening because they leaned into each other for such a long time that really it was a long lean in I was like oh really really no uh, I'm not ready no I didn't think it was gonna happen <laughs> yeah I thought maybe like a 
bird would fly in front of them or scare them uh, and they'd step back but no they did it and I had a lot of weird feelings about it I don't I'm still processing I'm not sure I'm into it I think they have too much they have to work out before they can can even try agree there's that side of things yeah at the end of the episode Megan decides I guess that she you can't move forward if you keep looking at the past. And I've only been in love with one man, which honestly, I kind of find that hard to believe that she's only been in love with one man her entire life after living in New York for a long time. She never dated anybody. She was still in love with Mick, I guess. I mean, I guess, but she's also living in New York for a long time. There's a lot of people in New York. <laughs> So, I mean, good for her. I shouldn't say that. Anybody that has only had one true love in their life, that's amazing and good for you. And I mean that with zero facetiousness. I'm being serious. I think that's awesome. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see how it all pans out. I know that Nell, oh, that's right. Nell was back this episode. Hey. Finally. Looking like Carmen San Diego. Well, she kind of did look like her in that hat. She the hat and the jacket? Yeah. That was amazing. I would wear that, honestly. Uh, yeah. Um, but Megan, I mean, um, Nell was pushing the whole thing with Megan. They they met for coffee or something or lunch. And Nell was basically like, yeah, don't be a fool. Just try again. Listen to your heart. I don't know, Nell. I think you were in Ireland too long. I don't think you're giving good advice right now. <laughs> Side note, we still aren't sure what she was actually doing over there. We know she got sick. According to Abby, she got pneumonia while she was there, but that doesn't tell us why she was in Ireland. What was she doing there in the first place? She was just... Does she, does she have family there? I don't know. They didn't never really... Who is she staying with? Exactly. <sighs> I have a lot of questions. Thank you. I never thought about them before, but now, like... What's she doing? Right. Sightseeing? Just by herself? I mean, good for her. Because she's gone a long time. Yes. <laughs> and nobody seemed to really, oh, Nell's back. Okay. Where has she been? And not one person in this whole episode. I mean, I'm sure technically if we want to get real ridiculous, at some point behind the scenes, off page, off script, they sat down and was like, Nell, how was your trip? But nobody on the actual episode was like hey how's your trip glad to we didn't get to see it so it didn't happen <laughs> like she didn't come home with her bag of souvenirs and be like here everybody you get these you get these salt shakers you get this you get that no they were just like oh Nell's back oh she's already running errands <laughs> <laughs> getting muffins and stuff from the-, the bakery that no one has ever heard of until this episode right that apparently Mick goes to all the time to get eclairs and sends Abby there So I guess we can move on to Abby because Abby, little miss, is hiding her suspension from work from everyone. She's not really telling everybody. So this episode, she doesn't really tell a whole lot of people why she's not going to work. She just says, oh, I'm taking the day and I'm going to go volunteer at the kids school. And she's at the table like the the kitchen table with Mick and you know, he tells her, you know what I used to do on my day off is I used to go get chocolate Claire's at this bakery. Sure. So she ends up deciding, yes, I'm going to go do that. She runs into Nell with that fabulous jacket and fabulous hat. And in the process of being at the cafe, she looks for an eclair and the plate is gone is empty. And she sees a man in the back of the bakery and she says, hello, uh, hello, which honestly, I thought she was kind of rude. It's rude. I agree. Right? I've worked in food like my whole life, and if anyone ever talked to me like that, <laughs> they would mute. Even if there was any clear left, they she wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> gonna be honest. <laughs> well. For me, but I also have super bad social anxiety, like in real life. So if somebody is not at the counter, 
there, you couldn't pay me enough to actually verbally go, um, excuse me, hello. I will just stand there silently until finally somebody goes, oh my God, sorry. Hey, what can I do for you? But like, no, it's fine. Totally. I mean. I, I'd probably leave and then go like sit in my car and then come back in and hope right. that someone is there. I will legit just stand there <laughs> for an hour and not if because I just won't say anything. And I know that's ridiculous to some people, but that's just okay. the way my brain works. So for her to be like, hello, like, oh, it made me very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> but so this guy turns around and he's got Neclair stuffed in his mouth, which I died laughing. The whole scene, I died laughing at him who we find out later his name is jay ross he's played by grayston holt aka the terrible boyfriend from all my heart but in this episode she was kind of the terrible one i'm not gonna lie because he turns around and he's trying to talk through the eclair yeah and she says abby says is that the last eclair and he takes it and says yeah do you want it (laughs) she was I thought was funny <laughs> and she's like are you kidding me all offended and at first I thought maybe she's just joking like oh are you kidding but she seemed kind of let me speak to the manager like okay settle down there like, I wonder if it was stress from everything that she's going through or if she's just one of those I, I need to speak to the manager type people because you know those people exist so I'm just gonna say stress just to give her the benefit of the doubt Okay, I will. Because <laughs> normally she's not, not like that, but I thought it was funny because, you know, he's like, well, okay then. And he shoves it back in his mouth and he's got his hands full. He's like, hey, can you get the door? I like him. I do too. I just thought that was a really great meet cute. And she was terrible. She was so mean. <laughs> um, but later in the show, she, she said Abby's at the school for the kids volunteering clean up the lunchroom and he shows up again and it turns out he's the third grade teacher there and they start chatting and abby has kind of a little mini breakdown because she's got the trash sorting incorrect but really she's just stressed out because earlier in the episode she gets served a subpoena i guess from court I'm guessing it has to do with the whistleblowing thing, but we don't know exactly what it is yet because they didn't really elaborate. So that'll be interesting. I don't understand law jargon. I don't really either. I just know that on TV shows and they're like, we're sending you a subpoena. And then they show up and you've been served. That's the extent of my legal analysis. So if you there are any lawyers listening, leave us some comments and let us know what that possibly could be. That would be helpful. So I'm going to bring up Trace and Emma. And can I ask you before I start on that, how do you feel about them? Trima. Yes. Trima. How do you feel about those two? I like them, but I don't oh. like them because I actually like more if I like them because it means the Trace and Emma. I mean, Abby. Yeah. I need, I need more. I don't know yet. Honestly, this is the part I got mad at. <laughs> And it really didn't have anything to do with their relationship as far as like any sort of romantic lead in. It was more of Emma keeps telling him, I'm not ready to sing on stage. And he practically forces her on stage. She jumps up there and introduces her and she has really no choice but to go up there. And that just super irritated me. Yeah. Yeah. That he just, you know, she says, I'm not ready. And he says, you, well, you're never like, oh, like all the way ready. You just got to dive in. Except later when manager Mark, Mark Hall shows up and wants to talk to Emma. What does Trey say? Well, Emma's not ready. Oh, so now we have opinions on whether Emma is ready or not. <laughs> Even though earlier you just threw her on stage and... You know, manager Mark, as irritating as he is, not the actor, the character, says, well, why don't you let her decide? Preach it, Mark. Why don't you let Emma decide what it is that she wants or does not want to do? In the end, Emma turns manager Mark down and says, she's not ready. Okay, well, I guess everybody's not ready. Whatever. I think he could be good at, like, printing and finding new artists, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just... 
not terribly interested in the goings on of the bridge or whether or not he can make it work. I just, yeah, I'm, I, I have no interest in it. Um, but I do have interest in Kevin and Sarah. I save the best for last again. I can't get over how much I love them this season. I just can't. Same it from the very beginning. Yeah, and I just feel like it was born out of a really good like storyline. Like they were interested in each other. They kind of started hanging out. She said she didn't want anything serious. So he tried to back off and then they decided to date. And then they kind of went through this. Maybe we shouldn't be too serious. But then they got to. I don't know. I just felt like it was a really good progression to the relationship. And now that they're at this part of it, it's one of the very few where I am I was just like super like squee oh my god when they got engaged just because i feel like we've watched them grow so much everyone says they have hard eyes i have hard eyes crying yeah Yeah, i just sit there with like my hands and my like my chin and my hands just like big hard eyes while i watch them they're so cute and i love it so i do and now so now i feel bad but i do have to ask this this entire episode and the last couple, basically, since they've gotten engaged, all their conversations have surrounded the wedding and wedding talk and being frustrated by basically the O'Brien clan taking over and making this like wedding palooza. So in your opinion, do you think that Kevin and Sarah are being too sensitive about it or do you think that they... Like, do you think they should just suck it up and just do what the family wants? Or do you think they should tell everybody, like, all right, that's enough? (laughs) I think they should tell everyone that's enough. Like, Right? I feel like that, too. No, I do. And they both said they didn't want a big wedding. I don't know. I just feel like at some point they just need to say, look, you can help plan, but this is what we want. And just help us achieve this very low-key day or stop. I don't think it needs to be as grand as everybody is making it out to be. They could use all of the same stuff they used for Thomas and Robin's wedding thing and everyone would be happy. Yes. That's a great idea. Okay. I need you to tweet the showrunners and let them know that that's a really good idea. And tell them, listen, we all know that this would be this would work so you know it'd be fun which i know it won't happen because they've already announced all 94 christmas movies that they're doing this year but wouldn't that be amazing if they had a christmas wedding movie for kevin and sarah i'll take any movie with kevin and sarah but christmas wedding i don't see them getting married during christmas i see them having a fall movie oh they can do a fall harvest that would be dreamy too Jess and David would have a Christmas movie. Like, oh my gosh, you're so right. Scratch that. Never mind. Yes, Jess and David Christmas wedding movie. Kevin and Sarah fall in the backyard movie. Oh, you have really good ideas. If when Brie gets married, she would have a summer wedding. I don't think about this or anything. <laughs> I think this is great. This is amazing. And you have really good ideas. And Hallmark, I need you to hire Jess Please. ASAP. <laughs> Yeah. Gosh, that would be so great. I mean, I know that there's been chatter about the sisters movie again, but I'm not sure what those recent updates are. I know it's still in the works. I just don't know any more than so I'll be excited for that. But yes, a w- couple of wedding movies. No, that would be nice. Already planning them in my head. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so yeah, I think we covered everybody. I mean, that was a lot. There, there a lot happened in this episode. This was a big episode. Like, I feel like this is a good midpoint because we're getting to that peak, and we're about to see how it all pays off in these last three. So, even though I got mad at some parts, they're the parts I always get mad at. It's just Trace. <laughs> it's just Trace. <laughs> 
Yes. So, well, and making Megan, but I'll get over that. I mean, I'll, uh, I have to see how it plays out in the next episode ish. One day you're not caring, and then the next day you're just like making Megan forever. I want to get there, Jess. I do. I want to get there. <laughs> but right now I'm across the street from you looking. Like, where is she? Like, the sun is in my eyes and it's glaring. And I'm just like, I don't see you. And you're waving with big Mick and Megan, like, banners. And I'm like, I don't see it. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't see it. I don't don't know where she's at. Yeah. So I want to get there. I do. I just, right now I'm still suspicious of all of this. Don't be suspicious. So. <laughs> You're like, come join this team. It's really fun. We have big make it big fat head cutouts. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I'll keep an open mind for next week. All I know is that the previews for next week, all it basically showed was Abby and Trace. So yeah. I have no thoughts on that. Okay. I'll take Mick and Megan instead of that. There. That's a compromise. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm sorry, Trabby fans. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so did you have any random moments from this episode that weren't really signif- significant to the plot, but just something that you... I mean, besides Nell's outfit, no, that outfit, like, it really changed my life. <laughs> like, she had glitter shoes. I'm going to recreate this look. I'm going on Amazon and I'm going to find a red trench coat and some glitter shoes. Okay, so you know how the Hardys have their reunion Mm -hmm. where they get every year they get together? So we need some sort of Chesapeake Shores event in where we can come in cosplay and yes, you can do that outfit. I'm just gonna I mean, I want that so bad. I am going to do it anyways, but I would also do it there. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to do it anyways, just for daily life. <laughs> yeah. I was I was trying to think through the episode and thinking if anything really stuck out to me. And really, no, because this was just a lot happening. And there's that, like a lot of changes. Jess and Davis twins also. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, one of them was called what? Cage. Gage? No. Shannon and Cage. 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 Um, <laughs> Michael Burns, one of the writers, said that those are the names of someone who works for the show. I want to say someone's assistants. Shannon and Cage both are. That's awesome. I love it. That was such a, that was a good scene. Okay. It was hilarious. That'll be our shared. That'll be our random moment. Yes. I did like that dinner scene. It was so it over was the top. absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it was very um now okay, so I'm not trying to date myself here, but it was it was very Three's Company. Um which I don't know if you watch that show i i was not allowed to watch three's company when i was a child (laughs) i have and i haven't gone back to watch it but well it was very reminiscent of that and i will tell you this that you know growing up in the time that i did when i came home from school it was um laverne and shirley then different strokes and then three's company and i did watch laverne and shirley and different strokes Okay, so, you know, and then I'd watch Three's Company, and then I never even thought about it. I just thought the, I thought everything was hilarious. And then as I got older and I started catching reruns of Three's Company, I'm like, oh my gosh, this show <laughs> was kind of dirty. That's why I wasn't allowed to watch it. <laughs> and my parents let me watch it. What? <laughs> it cracks me up. I'm like, this show is kind of racy. But anyways, I thought that whole dinner scene was very just yeah. like, very corny but very like typical 80s like sitcom I don't know I really liked it as nonsensical as that whole storyline was I did enjoy it I thought it was hilarious so all right well we did it we finished episode yay. three dude. I, but also not yay I know only three episodes left 
and then I'll be sad. But we'll have fall movies to cheer us up. But those are my favorites. Of all the Hallmark movies, the fall movies are my favorites. So I'm very excited for those to come up. Fall is maybe my favorite. Yeah. They're, I mean, I enjoy the Christmas, but it's a lot. Yeah. But fall, it's only a very limited opportunity window. So I get very excited about those movies. But Okay, so Jess, I super appreciate you coming on um, and chatting with me about this. You're the best. And how can people find you on social media so they can uh, follow your amazing wedding ideas for the show? I'm on Twitter at Jessie Jess. Yes, people, go follow her. She's awesome. And... You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Girl Gone Hallmark, and you can follow the pod on Twitter. Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> you can follow the pod on Twitter at Hallmarkies Pod, on Instagram at Hallmarkies Podcast, and if you are so inclined, you can join us over at Patreon.com forward slash Hallmarkies, where for as little as two dollars a month, you can have access to exclusive Patreon only content and giveaways. So thanks, guys. For all of you out there listening, if you have any comments about this show, the Chesapeake episode this week, or this show that we are currently on, leave us comments. Let us know. Join us on Twitter. Tweet at us. We love it. We appreciate each and every one of you that takes time to listen and support us. So, all right. See you later. Bye. Bye.